This is the seventh version of the internet radio I made. It can be powered by a battery. With two compact speakers mounted on the PCB, you can carry it anywhere with you, as long as there is a Wi-Fi to access the internet. You can change the radio station or adjust the volume with buttons or volume knobs. You can also use a large display and change the radio station or adjust the volume with rotary encoders. A desk power supply can drive large speakers to deliver even better sound. Or you don't even need those buttons or rotary encoders. You can control it from a web page. But that's not all about it. Since it has buttons and a display, we can make a good use of them, like join a rotating donut, catching falling objects, playing a car racing game, or even a Doom-like game. Since it has an I2S interface and audio amplifier connected, we can make some noise with man-made signals, or even turn it into a drum machine. Do you want to know how I made it and what I learned from the process? Let's find out! This video is sponsored by PCBWay. If you follow my channel long enough, you will notice that I have made the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth version of Internet Radio. Why did it suddenly jump to version 7? Where is version 6? Well, the fact is that I did make version 6. But I discovered so many mistakes in my design. I decided to fix all those bugs and make it into an entirely new version. That is the version 7 that I will show you today. The purpose is to improve my previous version and test some other new features that I may add to my future projects. Let's see some details about it. When I started designing the new version of the Internet Radio, I wondered if I could add some new features or functions to make it better. While researching some related topics, I stumbled upon a project called Yaw Radio. Well, Yaw Radio have been around for a long time. However, I didn't know it existed. What a shame. It looks promising, so this time I decided to design a PCB that is compatible with the Yaw Radio hardware configuration. Luckily, Yaw Radio provides an excellent tool to make pin assignment easy. It is my options header file generator. You can find the link on the GitHub project's top page. On the generator page, you need to choose the items and configure the pin assignments according to how you want to connect the pins in your design. If everything looks good, you can export your configuration as a My Options header file. I tried to make the least changes to the default settings and make sure I followed all the pin assignments in my schematic. For circuit and PCB designing work, I used KiCad. Now, let me walk you through how I designed the circuit. In this design, for simplicity, I choose to exclude the onboard USB serial converter circuit and instead use a dedicated external USB serial programming module I made. This approach helps save PCB space for other components. The key point to be careful about here is the order of the pin connections. Later, we will use the programmer clip to upload the program. So if the pin configuration is incorrect, there's a risk of damaging the board. The I2S related circuitry is reused from the previous design. I'm using the popular PCM5102A as usual. The XSMT pin is for software mute, meaning it can be mute the output when set to the ground, so make sure to connect it to 3.3V. If an external clock signal is not required, the SCK pin should be pulled down to the ground to enable the use of the internal clock. The audio amplifier circuit is also the same as in the previous design. 
I'm using the PAM8403D. I like it because it requires only a few external components, and the overall circuit is relatively simple. It supports stereo output, and I'm using two potentiometers to control the volume for each channel. As for the display, I choose one that is just the right size for the PCB. It's a very common 1.44 inch TFT display with a 128 by 128 pixel resolution. However, it is also possible to connect a larger display using the same pins. I will talk more about this later. With PCB mounted speakers, the design becomes portable. Additionally, terminal blocks are included, allowing for a connection to external speakers if intended. The buttons are designed to support up to six following the yaw radio settings. However, it is also possible to operate the device from a web page. This time, I've made it possible to use two rotary encoders in the yaw radio settings. In practice, you will use either the buttons or the rotary encoders, not both simultaneously. But I edited them as an option. I made sure to arrange the pin out in such a way that it would be compatible with the rotary encoder modules I have. I edited two RGB LEDs for experimentation. They are not needed for your radio. I also added a gyro sensor for experiments. This isn't related to your radio functions either. I plan to experiment with it for future projects. I also made it possible to use an 18650 battery, which provides 3.7 volt. Since the amplifier requires 5 volt and the ESP32 uses 3.3 volt, I added a boost converter to step up to 5 volt for the amplifier and a step down converter to drop from 5 volt to 3.3 volt for the ESP32. The boost up and step down converter circuit aren't particularly complicated, but during the first design, I made a mistake where the 3.3 volt from the step down was directly fed into the input of the boost up circuit, causing an infinite feedback loop. This caused the boost IC to overheat and made the whole circuit very unstable. This time, I updated the circuit and added solder jumpers to allow for switching between programming mode and operation mode. Once the circuit schematic is ready, let's move on to the PCB design. Once the board is completed, I'll use a programming clip to upload the firmware. So I place a pin header footprint near the edge of the board to ensure there's enough clearance for the clip to attach properly. The I2S related component layout using the PCM5102A is the same as what I used previously, so I'm following that design this time. The PAM8403D amplifier IC will be placed underneath the display to save space, so it's tucked away under the display when everything is working. The display is positioned towards the center bottom of the PCB with the buttons arranged on either side. The button layout was designed with a gamepad style configuration in mind. The speakers are PCB mounted, and since there isn't much space on the front surface, I decided to place them on the back of the PCB. Additionally, the terminal blocks are positioned at the edge of the PCB's underside, making it easier to connect external speakers. Next to the terminal blocks, I also placed the header sockets for rotary encoders, so the rotary encoder modules could be easily inserted and used right away. The RGB LEDs are for experimentation, so I just placed one on the left and one on the right as indicators for some operations. The gyro sensor is a very challenging component for hand soldering. In case like this, it is invaluable to use PCB waste PCB assembly service as it's a perfect solution. The 18650 battery holder was also placed on the back of the PCB due to space constraints. This arrangement made the layout much cleaner at the same time. Well, that's all for the PCB layout design. 
The next step is PCB manufacturing and assembly. Last time I tried PCB Way's assembly service and was amazed at how it turned out. I decided to use PCB Way's PCB assembly service again for this project. Don't get me wrong, I love doing the solder work myself. However, let's face it, soldering can be time consuming and error prone. When the components get smaller and the number of parts increases, it becomes harder to handle and easier to make mistakes. It's such a huge advantage that one important step in your project is done by professional. A few weeks later, the assembled boards landed in my mailbox. Look at it, how beautiful is that? As expected, all the components I specified have been neatly soldered. It is really fantastic that everything works right out of the box and it saves me so much time from soldering and unnecessary debugging. Now let's test the board. Thanks to the excellent design of your radio and the fantastic PCB assembly service from PCBWay, everything is working perfectly. If you are familiar with your radio, nothing will come as a surprise. The up and down buttons change the radio stations while the left and right buttons control the volume. The A and B buttons on the right are play and mode buttons, but aren't used very much. Since the software side is already well documented on the project's GitHub page, I will skip the details here. Let's see how the hardware works. Next, let's try a setup that uses a larger display along with rotary encoder. This 4-inch display I have works without any issue. Since the display is different from the previous one, you will need to create a new My Options header file. Pay close attention to the pin mapping when connecting the display. Make sure the display driver is correctly configured. In a setup, we can also connect large speakers to have better sound. As I mentioned before, in addition to your radio, there are a few other things I plan to experiment with. Let's take a look at those now. The first thing I want to test is I2S. I2S is a digital audio communication protocol used to send audio data from a microcontroller to a DAC or amplifier. If you have audio data like decoded wave or MP3, you can send it via I2S for playback as analog sound. Even without pre-recorded data, the microcontroller can generate waveforms like sine waves, noise, or square waves in real time and output them through I2S. This allows for synthesized sounds, beeps, or other effects similar to a basic synthesizer. I even created a simple program for that purpose. It generates some simple tones. Fortunately, I also found an open source project that builds a full feature synthesizer using a similar hardware configuration as mine. With some minor modifications, I was able to run it on my hardware. Creating a synthesizer is also a very interesting topic, and it's worth discussing in a separate video. So, I'll skip the details for now. Next, let's try the gyro. I created this program to experiment with the gyro. When you tilt the PCB, the circle on the screen moves in sync with the tilt, and the color of the RGB LED also changes based on the tilt. With a bit of more programming, it is possible to create something even more interesting. 
Also, with the display and buttons, I was able to create some simple games for this hardware. Let me show you a few basic examples. Please note that these are just demos, not fully polished or complete games. But as you can see, there is a lot of potential here. In today's video, I have shared why and how I made an internet radio board compatible with your radio. I also did some interesting experiments with this board. It was a really fun process to learn something new. If you have any requests or specific topics you'd like me to cover, feel free to leave a comment. Well, I guess I had another successful project. How do you like my design for the Real Radio? If you are interested in making internet radios, or you like hobby electronics, or PCB designing, please subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.